Hi folks, it's the FPL General here recording another episode of my 59th Minute FPL Podcast. Recording on Tuesday morning the 30th of April. So we've got just game weeks 37 and 38 ahead of us now. So the season is coming to a close very quickly. We've got Champions League and Europa League action this week. So as always, best to be patient with those transfers. Hold off for the press conferences on Thursday and Friday before pulling the trigger and important to remember as well it is a friday deadline again this week so don't get caught out by that one going to split the pod into five sections this week uh, a quick review of game week 36 then i'll talk about my the players on my watch list for the last two game weeks take a few twitter questions talk about captaincy for game week 37 and just talk about my potential transfers as well so should be a pretty quick episode this one with hopefully plenty of takeaways that you can mull over for the rest of the week before you make your final decisions for the weekend so game week 36 first of all it was a good game week for me i came out with 95 points minus four so uh, 91 gave me a, a decent green arrow from 372k to 331k so if the way I'm looking at the last two game weeks now, I'm, I'm hoping I can make up about 80,000 places over the last two game weeks to get me to inside the top 250k. If I could do that over the last two game weeks, you know, I'll be happy enough and I'll just get get this nightmare of a season over with and then, you know, spend spend some time looking at what can be learned from it and, and then come back stronger next season. So I will be doing a, a podcast when the season finishes. So I'll do a pod next week for game week 38. And then the following week, I'll do a, a post-mortem podcast where I'll look look back on my season as a whole and see what can be gleaned from it and what can be you know brought into next season. So that, that should be a good in, uh, an interesting episode. So as I said, I took a minus four going into the weekend. I got rid of the injured De Bruyne and I got rid of Trippier as well uh, so I could get Sterling in. So I brought in Sterling and Scott Dan. I had 4.4 million to spend on a defender and... For no other reason than the fact that he was owned by 0.0% of managers. Scott Dan came into my team and he got me a clean sheet. So I was dreaming of a 15-point haul from Scott Dan, but hopefully that will come in 37 or 38. But good good to get a clean sheet there, especially when Trippier again didn't show up for Spurs. And that was one of the reasons I didn't mind losing Trippier because I said last week I just don't trust him to, to play week in, week out. Uh, and the guy Foyth had another decent game. Uh, at right wing back although they they lost obviously but Trippier just can't trust him so tr- the Sterling minus four didn't really hasn't paid off yet but I fully expect Sterling to do well for me over the the last two game weeks so I think that minus four will be justified when I look back on it at the end of the season fingers crossed uh, what else went well for me I played my triple captain chip got 39 points from Sadio Mane uh, probably my best ever triple captain chip, I think. Uh, I need to check that one, but I think it is the best one I've ever played. Uh, it was strange to be, you know, slightly disappointed with 39 points, having watched the game. Uh, that header that hit the post was very, very frustrating. Uh, you know, he obviously he scored two great headers, and then he had a, a chance to score a hat trick, which probably would have sealed uh, three bonus points for him. In the end, he he got zero bonus. Uh, Salah. Salah Robertson and Trent got all the bonus points so I think that you know that people have said that, that if that header had went in from Manny it would have been an extra eight points so that would have been an extra 24 points for us on triple captain so it could have been could have been even better but there's no chance I'm going to come on and, and start complaining about 39 points from triple captain because that's as much as you can as you can hope for obviously not owning Salah hurt me uh, but at least you know the red thing other things went well Robertson uh, unbelievable 12 assists for Robertson now this season he's just been an absolute star I think he's the highest scoring defender ever in FPL now and you know he's still got a couple of games to go to to build on that so one of the one of the shining lights one of the very few shining lights of my season has having having owned Robertson for most of the campaign and you know he's gonna he's gonna be very expensive next season as is Alexander Arnold so it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky next season when it comes to Liverpool I think Ward Prowse finally got me some points. Disappointing in a double game week, which I brought him in for. He had to play right wing back because of Valerie's illness, but it was good to see him back in midfield at the weekend and a nice nine pointer there. Uh, I had a question to 
one of my you know the big dilemma I had going into game week thirty six was whether to start Ward Prowse or Danny Ings, and in the end I went for Ward Prowse because of minutes. I just felt Ward Prowse had more chance of getting ninety minutes than Danny Ings, so thankfully that one paid off for me. Jimenez and Aguero up front. I know a lot of people have those two, so they just tick along nicely with the points most weeks. So that was that was thirty six for me. It was all in all, it was a pretty good one. Some monster scores this week. You know, I've seen scores of 130, 140 in a lot of mini leagues. So well done if you're in the 100 club this week. I actually, looking back, I haven't got 100 points at all this season. It's probably one of the first seasons in a long time where I haven't managed to hit 100 in a game week. But, you know, still two game weeks to go. So you never know. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll leave it late. Scott Dan and his 15 point haul should, should help. Moving on now, start to look ahead rather than back. Looking ahead to game week thirty seven and game week thirty eight, I'm kind of going to put group them together almost because you know that's what most people are doing now anyway. So I've had a, I've had a look at my watch list. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few players that I'm interested in for the last couple of weeks and a few differentials as well. I know a lot of people are you know probably looking at mini leagues and things like that and trying to make up ground. So differentials are popular at the moment. So I've got a few of those as well to think about. So I'm just going to start with the, the two teams fighting for the title, Liverpool and City. I have, I've only got two Liverpool and two City, so the most logical thing for me to do would be to you know, use my remaining transfers to get more Liverpool and more City players. So I've got Manny, I've got Robertson, I've got Aguero and I've got Sterling. So the others I'm interested in, the obvious candidates as usual, Alexander-Arnold or Van Dijk for the double up in Liverpool defence or Mo Salah if I want to splash the cash. But I'm unlikely to do that now because I've got Sterling in there and Aguero, so it's very hard to fit Salah in. I think last week was the time to make that move. Uh, if I was to go for a third City player, uh, Laporte is always an option. Plays most games. Uh, he's been he's been a, a very good FPL asset this season. I like, I like Bernardo Silva if I'm looking for a second City midfielder. I think he could do well over the last two games. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't been very consistent in his returns this season. Um, but he, the potential is always there. You know, he plays plays for the best attacking team in the league, so there's always potential there for him to get goals and assists. So, I like Bernardo for the last two weeks, and another one as well thrown is Kyle Walker. Not many people have Kyle Walker, but when it comes to the end of the season. You know, budget's not really a problem. You know, you're more inclined to spend more money on players maybe than you would earlier in the season. So, if you've got cash lying around and you want a city defender and you want to be a little bit different, Kyle Walker I think could be a, a good option as well. He's got he's picked up bonus points in the last two city games, so he is he, he is performing well. Just just a, a you know a slightly different one to throw in there from the usual suspects. Moving away from the two big sides uh, a few more here Jota a player I you know I, I regret not owning more this season especially in the latter half of the season had him in game week one had him for the first four game weeks and he did nothing and now he's he's the player that we all thought he would be uh, he's got Fulham this week and he does have Liverpool in the last game week of the season but that Liverpool game wouldn't put me off getting him in this week for the Fulham fixture you know he could easily score 10 plus points in that one to make it worth it, even if he doesn't get anything against Liverpool on the final day, um, I, I really like him for this week against Fulham at home. He, he's just, you know, he's a player in form. Wolves are a great side, so he's he's a no brainer really. If you don't have him, he's definitely one to consider, and he's one I'm considering this week for my transfers, which I'll come to later in the pod. A lot of talk this week about Man United players. Classic case of you know fixture over form. Uh, Cardiff and Huddersfield to come, so Pogba is an option. I was looking at his returns there before I started recording. Over the last eight game weeks, he's only got attacking returns in one game, and that was uh, the brace against West Ham. Uh, I think it was back around game week 29 or 30. So it's it's going back quite a while to get Pogba points. But I think sometimes in FPL, the fixtures are just too hard to to resist. And, and those fixtures, Huddersfield and Cardiff for United, uh, coupled with the fact that we need, to, we need to win both them games. So I'm expecting... You know, plenty of goals, but where where are they going to come from is the big uh, question. There's question marks over Rashford's fitness. I seen a couple of tweets this morning that there's there may be question marks over Lukaku's fitness now as well. So I think when it comes to a United, you know, midfielder or attacker, Pug was the safe bet because he has penalties, and even though he's been absolutely useless for us in football in terms and also in FPL terms over the last couple of weeks, 
it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever to see him you know come away with some big points over these last two games so i still think pog was a very good option i wouldn't let the poor form put you off these fixtures are just just too appealing um another player who's on my watch list is hazard you know i had him most of the season sold him on the wild card then but a lot of people are considering him you know moving maybe from a spurs midfielder to hazard this week if they've got a, a bit of cash in the bank He's got Watford at home, which could be his last, you know, last game at Stamford Bridge, and then Leicester away on the final day. So, again, he's, you know, when it comes to mini leagues, and you know, if you're in the top 10k, he's probably quite lowly owned. So, could be a nice differential for the last two weeks. Hazard, uh, I don't think I'll go back there, but I can see why people are. Moving on now to differentials on the watch list. So, most of these players are around, you know, five percent ownership or less. Uh, defenders first of all I like Van Anholt I always like Van Anholt uh, at this stage of the season uh, he did he think he got me 18 points uh, in game week 38 last season so I've got fond memories of, of PVA um, Palace finished the season with Cardiff and Bournemouth so the fixtures are good there as well for PVA so uh, you know I may even get him in alongside Scott Dan and, and go for the go for the Palace double up for the last couple of weeks unlikely but but I do like PVA Luke Shaw, uh, a lot of people talking about Luke Shaw this week. Again, comes down to fixtures here more than anything else. He did. He got a he got a great assist at the weekend. Uh, so you know he's got clean sheet potential. He's got assist potential. So I think Shaw is a, is a very good option for the last two game weeks as well. Moving on to midfielders differentials, I really like Nathan Redmond. I don't have him. I've got triple Southampton already. I've got Valerie Ward Prowse and Danny Ing. So I can't get to Redmond. You know, part of me wishes I could. I watched the Southampton highlights again at the weekend, and he he, he was the one who stood out. You know, he's he's not scoring goals. It's it's probably four or five games since he scored a goal. I think he got an assist at the weekend, but you know, he he gets a lot of chances, and you know, basically plays as a striker. So, I think Redmond is a very good option as well for the last two game weeks. He's got West Ham and Huddersfield. So again, if you're looking for differential captains, game week thirty eight, Redmond against Huddersfield is not the craziest idea. Uh, a couple of other, you know, left field options here. Alexis Sanchez, the forgotten man. If if Rashford's out, if Lukaku is struggling as well, Sanchez is likely to get game time in these last two games. And again, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're if you're on the pitch playing for United against Huddersfield and Cardiff, you'd fancy yourself to get points. So Sanchez is, you know, a very left field option. He's, he's I think he's about ten million as well. So. It's a lot of money to fork out, but again, if you've got nothing to lose or you've got a lot of ground to make up, if it you know wait for Solskjaer's press conference at, at uh, on Friday, uh, and if it sounds like Sanchez is going to get starts, you know why not? Uh, Ryan Babel, not as left field as Sanchez, he's because he's been performing quite well in recent weeks, and and Fulham have been performing quite well. They Fulham finished the season with uh, Wolves and Newcastle, so again the fixtures are not too bad. But I still find it quite hard to to choose a a Fulham player when they're you know already relegated. Um, but again, Babel Babel is not the worst shout in the world if you're looking for a differential. You know he's probably playing for a for a move now as well. He's not going to want to play in the Championship, so he's going to know there's going to be eyes on him, uh, and he's going to want to perform in the last two games. So. Another option to consider there. Uh, another one, West Ham, uh, Mikhail Antonio. Back-to-back goals. Uh, he's always a sneeze away from another injury, a bit like his teammate Arnie. But he has, you know, he's looked good in the last two games. I've seen him. Uh, great goal against Spurs and should have, you know, should have scored again. He had a very similar chance that Lurie saved. So uh, Arnie seems to be injured again. So that looks good for Antonio. He could even play up front. Uh, for the final two games West Ham have Southampton and Watford again two decent fixtures so I think Antonio could do well I think he could continue his form uh, he just needs to just needs to sort out those goal celebrations nobody nobody wants to see that uh, I've got Lukaku down here as a differential as well but again a couple of whispers this morning about a possible hamstring I think it is for him so you know don't bring him in until Friday uh, wait for the wait for further updates on Lukaku and Rashford. You know, be be patient with the transfers. There's no need to be moving early uh, at this stage of the season, especially when there's you know Champions League and Europa League midweek as well. So just hold off on that one. But you know, if Lukaku's okay, I think he could be you know a very good differential for the last two weeks. He is. We know from the past he's a flat track bully, likes playing against the smaller side. So 
he I think it is six games. I think he's gone six games without any attacking returns. But again, fixtures with good fixtures can come an upturn in form. So I do like Lukaku for the last two weeks if he's fit. The last differential I will mention is good old Christian Benteke. He's he started to get ninety minutes now again for Palace. He, he's he's you know uh, shifted Batshuayi from the first team. So again, those Palace fixtures, Cardiff and Bournemouth, so great fixtures, especially for the attacking players there. So I like Benteke as a differential. Zaha as well. You know Zaha's not really a differential. He's 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 got a decent ownership, but. If you're if you're not keen on on Benteke, then I think Zaha is a very good option there as well for Palace. Palace are just a team I like. You know they're finishing finishing the season strongly. Um, I think they're a good team to target for the last couple of weeks. Palace. Moving into Twitter questions now, I've got five here. Thanks to everyone who sent in the questions. I've picked out five of the best uh, that cover some of the main the main hot topics this week. The first one came in from uh, Seamus FPL Drunk. Um, Seamus asks what what do Vardy owners do now do they keep him or do they sell him so yeah it's a, it's a tough one now Vardy has been in such good form but he plays uh, Man City next and then Chelsea on the final day so you know the City fixture is not ideal for Vardy um, Chelsea probably you know I wouldn't be, I'd be I would happily play him against Chelsea that game's at home as well but I think the main reason people are questioning Vardy now is because there's a lot of other options out there. You know, we talked about United strikers there. Um, I've seen people talking about maybe going to Lacazette or Aubameyang for the last two weeks. Um, there's lots of other, you know, cheaper options up front as well. So I can see why people are considering moving away from Vardy. Obviously, I moved away from him too early. I I moved him when I when I did that uh, dreaded uh, that nightmare. KDB transfer, uh, Vardy Vardy left to to fund that one. So I missed Vardy's points against West Ham and Arsenal. So I think there's a lesson there as well for me. When I look back on the season, I think that's one of the transfers I will I'll look back on and, and you know learn from it. Is you know you don't you don't sell you don't sell informed players who have got good fixtures. And you know Vardy had West Ham and Arsenal, and I would class both of those as good fixtures for him. So that was me trying to be too clever in the Elite sixty four mini league and. I seen Vardy as a highly owned player. Uh, KDB, KDB was lowly owned, so I took a you know a calculated gamble and it you know backfired big time. And I think that that you know people who are you know considering similar moves in many leagues, I think it's you know that that that's an example that it's much better just to stick with the players who are in form uh, rather than you know trying to to take a punt because the punts more often than not don't pay off. So Vardy, what would I do with Vardy now if I owned him? It's it's kind of hard for me to answer this because I'm bitter now that I've already sold him. But I think if I if I had kept them for West Ham and Arsenal, I would what I would probably do now is take the points and run, and try and probably move to someone who who does have better fixtures for the last two weeks. Now I expect Leicester to make things tricky for Man City, but I don't really see them scoring any more than one goal against that City defence. So. I would I would happily move off Vardy now uh, and move to someone who's got better fixtures for the last two weeks. But you know it's it's easy for me to say that when he's when he's punished me big time for the last two weeks. Anyone who keeps him, I think that's justified as well. You know, it's I wouldn't be surprised if Leicester do score against City. You would expect it to be Vardy, and against Chelsea on the final day, I think you know Leicester could easily score a couple of goals there. So it's it, it is a tough one, um, but I do think I would just edge towards getting rid of him for someone who does have. A better running. Next question is from Alan Cooper. Alan asks, "Are any United players worth getting?" Uh, in Alan's case, he says the only position that he needs to improve in in his team is a goalkeeper. So he's considering David de Gea, and he asks, "Is he crazy?" So the first question: Are any United players worth considering? I think they are worth considering because of the fixtures. I mentioned Pogba. I think the only two I'm really interested in are Pogba or Luke Shaw. Uh, I don't think I would go anywhere else. Uh, but again, depending on the injury situation, that might change things later in the week. The Allen's considering David de Gea. I just wouldn't go there because he he's been he's been so poor. It it really surely Solskjaer has to be considering at least. You know, taking him out of the spotlight for these last two games. You know, our Romero is a very good backup goalkeeper. You know, he's one of the best backup goalkeepers in the league. So 
it really wouldn't weaken our side to put him in there for the last two games. So I don't think it will happen, but there surely is a chance that it would happen. So that's enough just for me and FPL to stay away from David De Gea. I think there's better options goalkeeper-wise anyway. So I would stay clear of De Gea. Uh, and I think Luke Shaw and Pogba are probably the only two I'm interested in. If Lukaku's fit, I think he's a very good option as a differential as well. So yeah, I, I wouldn't ignore United with these fixtures. I think we, I think it would be silly to ignore them with the fixtures because we should win both games and we should score, you know, plenty of goals in both games as well. So don't don't let the recent form put you off. Third question came in from at New Paul Lambert. Um, he asks, who is the best differential punt outside of the top six for the final two game weeks? So I mentioned him already, uh, a player that I don't own who I kind of wish I could get to for the last two weeks is Nathan Redmond. I think he will, I think he will, will see those chances being converted into goals over these last two games against West Ham and Huddersfield. So I fully expect Redmond to do very well over the last two games. I don't have him and I can't get to him either, which annoys me. So I think I'm going to throw him in there as the best differential outside of the top six. Next question was from Real Debacle, uh, who still has his triple captainship. So he asks, should he play it in 37 or 38? And, you know, who to play it on? So Real Debacle is thinking about Aguero, but he doesn't know whether to play it against Leicester at home or Brighton away on the final day. So I'm glad I used it in 36 because again it's a tricky one now whether to go 37 or 38 I think I would go City you know there's I think Liverpool Liverpool's fixtures are tougher they've got Newcastle who are always capable of shutting teams out with Benitez in charge and Wolves are, are just a great side so they could make things really tricky for Liverpool on the final day so I must prefer Man City's fixtures against Leicester and Brighton for the triple captaincy chip uh, so I would be looking at Sterling or Aguero and I think what I would do, I would probably use it this week against Leicester. Uh, I just fancy that fixture because Leicester will, you know, I expect Leicester to come out and have a go at Man City, which could play into City's hands. Uh, I think that could be a pretty high scoring game, that one, on Monday night. So I do like Sterling or Aguero for that triple captaincy chip. And I really don't know which one I would go for. Um, I'll talk about my captaincy coming up uh, you know after these questions which might give you an idea of what I would do but again it's it is a tough one you know Brighton on the final day is a great great fixture as well for City but I don't know I think I think I just prefer the the home I always prefer the the idea of playing a triple captaincy at home uh, so I do like it this week against Leicester last question I will tackle this week is from FPL Crypto is Pogba for Sun a no-brainer so he's considering getting Pogba in for Hyungman's son. Is it a no-brainer? I, would, I wouldn't say it's a no-brainer. Uh, I actually wouldn't be too keen on this transfer. The fact that Son is not going to play Champions League tonight because of his suspension, uh, tonight or tomorrow, I don't, know, don't even know which game is on which night, The I would fully expect Son to play against Bournemouth at the weekend. Now, he could obviously have his minutes managed, but that Bournemouth fixture I think is a very good one for Son. And then they've got Everton on the final day. Now, we don't know if he'll play the final day because of Champions League and things like that. But I, I'm i going to keep Son. I've got Son and Eriksen. Uh, and I'm going to keep Son for the rest of the season. Yes, his form has dried up a little bit. But you know he hasn't become a bad player overnight. And I, I fully expect Son to do well against Bournemouth if he does start, which I think he will start. So I'd rather keep in Son than get in Pogba. And again, I'll talk about Pogba again when it comes to my transfers because he is in my thoughts. So the short answer there is I don't think it is a no-brainer. I, th- I think it's a different story if you have Eriksen. I think he's you know more likely to have his minutes managed. So I think it's easier to go from Eriksen to Pogba than Son to Pogba. I'm going to back the South Korean to finish the season strongly. Cheers, cheers for the questions, folks. Uh, moving on now to Game Week 37 captaincy. So I put a poll on Twitter this morning. Uh, for Game Week 37 captaincy and I re- included four options uh, Aguero, Sterling, Salah and Mane uh, and it's, it's annoying on Twitter that you can only include four options because there's a lot of other good options for captaincy as well this week but they were the four I went with I feel they're probably the four best options uh, so there was about just over 2,000 votes when I checked last and Aguero got 47% so you know big a big 
proportion. Proportion went for Aguero. Sterling was in second with 25% of the vote. Salah got 16% and Mane got 12%. In addition to those, there was quite a few replies about Hazard. People are considering getting Hazard and giving him the armband against Watford. Uh, Jota and Jimenez, very popular as well. Wolves at home to Fulham. And a few mentions for Pogba as well uh, for that Huddersfield fixture. So for me, Aguero is running away with the pole, but I think I'm going to go Sterling this week. I brought Sterling in for a minus four uh, last week, and part of that was with a view to giving him the armband in 37 and 38. Um, and I think I'll stick to that strategy. Uh, Sterling has been, you know, quieter in recent weeks, but I fully expect him to to deliver again, you know, in the last two game weeks. So, and I just like the the fact he's a midfielder, you know, over Aguero. If they get a clean sheet, he gets an extra point and you know extra point for a goal as well. So I think owning I think owning both Aguero and Sterling for the last two games is a good idea. Um, but I'm just leaning towards Sterling for the captaincy for the for the last two game weeks. Again, it you know partly because of my position. You know, if I want to make up eighty thousand places over the last two game weeks, I think it makes more sense for me to go Sterling. You know, he's he's not as highly owned as Aguero is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, bank on Sterling outscoring Aguero over the next two game weeks. But obviously, I hope both of them do well as a, as an owner of, of the two of them. So that's my thoughts on captaincy. I'm not really keen on a Liverpool captaincy this week um, uh, away to Newcastle. I just, I always fancy Benitez to have have his defence well drilled and, and frustrate. So I think Man City will score more goals than Liverpool will this week. So that's why, I think that's why, you know, Sterling and Aguero are getting a lot more votes in that poll there. Moving on to my possible moves this week. So I've got one free transfer and looking at my team, it looks pretty strong on paper. So the first the first option is to bank a transfer and have two frees for the final day, uh, which is pretty appealing. Uh, the other option probably the most obvious option would be Ericsson out I've got Ericsson and Son so Ericsson out to someone like Pogba or Jota or even Bernardo Silva to get a third Man City player so most likely that's what I'll do I think I'll probably get rid of Ericsson this week for one of those three uh, again I don't give transfers too much thought until after the the Champions League and Europa League game so I'll see what happens there if there's any you know unforeseen injuries to any of the Liverpool or City players you know obviously that changes everything and I think Solskjaer's press conference is important this week as well for the likes of Rashford and Lukaku so going to wait patiently for that one most likely I think usually his his is on a on a Friday morning so I'll be up bright and early uh, listening out for that one the o- the only other option I could do this week is you know I like the idea of fixing the weakest link in my team I heard the guys on the always cheating podcast mentioning this today as well you know a good a good strategy when it comes to transfers in fpl is to to target your weakest the weakest part of your team and and fix it so looking at my team this week the weakest link is probably the goalkeepers i've got foster uh, who plays chelsea and i've got matt ryan who plays arsenal so i could do a goalkeeper switch but for me at this stage of the season it's just pretty sounds pretty boring to use a free transfer you know i've only got two free transfers left Sounds pretty boring to get rid of a, a goalkeeper, so I'm probably not going to bother doing that one. And I, I really don't know which one of them goalkeepers I'll start this week. Yeah, Brighton play Arsenal away, and Watford are away to Chelsea. So I really, I'm really not sure. I'll probably go for Foster, I think, in that one. But again, it's it's pretty fifty fifty at the minute. A minute, I need to give it more thought. Toss of a coin, possibly. Um. Before I go, a quick mention, we recorded, myself and James recorded the Fantasy Weekly podcast last night. It should be available at 2pm on Wednesday. Very good podcast this week. We changed up the structure and rather than looking at the Game Week 37 fixtures game by game, we kind of talked more about strategy for the final two game weeks. You know, what do you do if you're winning your mini league? What do you do if you're if you've got ground to make up, how do you you know consolidate a top ten k finish, or how do you make up ground? So definitely a good week to check that one out this week if you if you haven't done so before. It should be just under an hour as well, so it's not it's not too long there. Uh, lots you know I got lots of questions today for this podcast about you know what to do you know in mini leagues to protect leads and and build up leads, but I deliberately left them out so that you can check out that one instead, um, and it's a really good discussion uh, between myself and James there on that one. 
As always, I will be competing on Fantasy Bet this weekend, Game Week 37. Uh, and I, I just noticed today as well, there's a big tournament planned for the final day of the season, Game Week 38, the season finale. There's a £5,000 prize pool for that one. So I'm looking forward to that on the final day. Hopefully end the season on a high and, and win a few bob on that one. If you're listening to this podcast as well on Tuesday or Wednesday, Fantasy Bet always have Champions League contests, so check them out as well. You know, give yourself a bit more interest in the games if you're watching them. As always, if you're using Fantasy Bet, it's 18 plus and begambleaware.org. Enjoy the rest of your week, folks. Uh, enjoy the Champions League games. I'm looking forward to sitting down tonight and tomorrow and watching those games. Again, don't forget it's a Friday deadline this week. Don't get caught out by that at this stage of the season Uh, and good luck in game week 37 and i'll be back next week for the game week 38 episode and then once the season's done i'll spend a couple of days picking the bones of my season and i'll I'll get a podcast out there as well which should which should be one of the best podcasts of the season because there should be a lot to be learned from my season that we can all take into next season so cheers as always for listening folks and i'll talk to you all next week